Highway friends, it's good to be with you again this week. I hope that you've been able to get outside, that you're enjoying the new weather, that you're getting to finish some school stuff. Would love to hear how things are going, but I'm glad that you're all healthy and safe. So today we're almost done with Eastertide. Next week, it's Pentecost. So you gotta get every red or orange or yellow thing you have and wear it and take a picture. I'm serious. And I want you to send it to me because we're going to do a slideshow of everybody in the church. And I'd love to see you. If you don't want to wear red or orange or yellow, that's okay. But I want you to take a picture today. Like you could even do it right now. You could pause and then take a picture and then text it to me or email it to me so that we can have it next week. Sometimes I get so distracted. That never happens to you, right? Okay, Easter died. Here we are. We started with this beautiful scenery and we went from the Easter lily that shows us new life, the egg that shows us new life, the birds that show us new life, the sheep and the butterfly. And today we get a heart and the heart says, Jesus loves us. So we're going to be talking about Jesus and love today. But before we do that, we're going to say our prayer together. So you want to find a space that is not too hard for you to sit a little quietly. I want you to find a way to figure out what to do with your hands. Again, you might put them up. You might put them on your lap. You might fold them like this or like this. And sometimes if my hands are really moving, I sometimes do this because it kind of helps me stay really, really close. So you ready for our prayer? Remember, this is the last Sunday of Eastertide. So next week we'll be saying some new things, but this one we're still talking about Easter. So let's pray. Dear God, be with us as we celebrate the season of Easter. Thank you for giving us new life that never ends. Amen. Okay, so the story we're talking about today comes from the book of John. John is in the New or the Old Testament, do you know? New Testament. And the New Testament starts with the four Gospels. And a lot of them kind of tell the same story, but it's a little different because different people wrote them. And this one, John wrote, and he's kind of talking about his memories of Jesus and the things that he taught and the things he learned from him. And so that's why all the four Gospels are a little different because everyone was telling their stories. So this one, we're talking about when before Jesus died, he had a meal with his friends. He had a really special meal. What do we call that meal now when we have it? Communion. So he had what we call communion now. They just called it dinner, but he knew it was a special dinner. And he wanted to make sure that he told his disciples some things. And one of them was to care for each other. Have you ever been told to care for maybe your sibling or a friend. Like when my kids go out together, I'll say, take care of each other or watch out for each other. It's kind of what Jesus was doing here. So if you want to, underneath this video on the website, there's a thing that says resources. And there's two pieces of paper. If you want to pull them up, you can. Or if you want to print them out, you can. Or you don't have to. But it has a prayer on it that I'm going to do right now and we're going to talk about. And then it has an activity sheet that you can do later with your family. So this is what Jesus was telling his disciples in the book of John. Dear God, I love my followers and they love me. Connect all the people who follow me with your love. Just as you and I are connected by love. Connect them so they will be of one heart and one mind. Thank you for loving us all. I think I need to read that again. Dear God, 
I love my followers and they love me. Connect all the people who follow me with your love, just as you and I are connected by love. Connect them with love so they will be of one heart and mind. Thank you for loving us all. Okay, so what was John saying about the connection Jesus and God had? What connected them? Do you remember the symbol? Love, love connected them. And so then how did Jesus connect to the disciples? Love. And how did the disciples connect to one another? Love. Yep, all of it comes to God's love. So it's a really great thing to remember and kind of weird to be that we're connected in that way. Did you know that almost seven years ago, I didn't know anything about Fairmount Presbyterian Church. I didn't know about the road that I live on, on Scottsdale Boulevard. I didn't know how much I would sneeze here in the springtime. I didn't know anything about the Browns and really a whole lot about Cleveland. But then I was looking for a job and I met some people from Fairmount and I started liking them. And then I think they started liking me and then I got hired and then our whole family moved to Cleveland and we love it and we love you all and you have all started loving me. So we're connected by love now too. And in the church, it's a special kind of love because we understand the love of Jesus and the ways that Jesus teaches us how to live and care for each other. So it's a really special kind of love. And if it wasn't for the love of Jesus, I would not even know you. My life would not be as special as it is because I know you. So I want you to think, who are people that you're connected to by love? Some of those people are probably the people you miss seeing. And I want you to spend some time today drawing a picture. You could write a poem. You could write a letter. But to thank the people that you are connected to by love, and then I want you to put it in the mail because I know many of you have been getting on the computers or on the tablets and being able to talk to people and that's great, but it's so nice to get mail and it's even better when it's a letter that says, I love you, I'm so thankful for you. So I want you to spend some time as a family writing some letters today. The other thing you can do is there's a worksheet that you can talk about the ways that you're connected to other people. I think it's really important for us to know, even in these times when we can't see each other physically all the time and do some of the same things that we are used to doing, that we remember that we're still connected, that it's still really important that we think of other people, that we remind other people that we care about them and that we're really thinking about them. The other thing you can do is play a game. Some of you, when you're in the pool, We'll play a game called Marco Polo. And so there's someone who's it and they close their eyes and they say Marco and everybody else says Polo and you kind of fill around to try to find them. Well, it's kind of like that, but you'll do it in your house, first floor only, because we don't need to have stairs and people who don't have uh, their eyes open. You'll go and you'll say, if you're it, everybody, who's, everybody who is playing will go and scatter around the whole house. They'll do that. <clears throat> excuse me, like hide and go seek. So you'll close your eyes, count to 20 slowly, and then they'll go and stand somewhere, but you're going to keep your eyes shut. And then you're going to say, Jesus love. And then the people who are freezing in place are going to say, connects us. And then you're going to say, Jesus love connects us. And you're going to get closer to the voices. Once you find someone, then you're both going to hold hands. And then you're going to both close your eyes and go try to find someone else by saying, Jesus love connects us. Got it? You have problems. Text me, call me. Could be kind of fun. It probably is a little more fun if you go outside, if it's nice, um, but make sure you stay safe. So 
before we go, couple things. Miss Chris has really fun songs on uh, the same webpage. So I would love for you to listen to um, the songs and learn them. There's one today about Jesus love and it's to this tune of bingo. So then it will stay in your brain forever and it will be great. And uh, then next week uh, you could wear red or orange or yellow when you watch this video because it's going to be Pentecost. But even before that, sometime today, I want you to take some pictures. It doesn't have to be like a family shot. It can be each of you in different places. It could be you in your bedroom or outside, or you can make a fort and take a picture. But I want to see pictures of you all at home because we're going to try to show as many people as we can from the church next week on a slideshow so that we can remember one another and we can celebrate who we are as a church. Next week is kind of like the church's birthday. It's kind of a big deal and you can dress up if you want. So there are some things. Also, if you want to visit or schedule some time that we can talk on the phone or have a video, I would love that anytime. Now for our closing. Today, we are, because we're connecting to one another through the love of Jesus, we're gonna share the peace of Christ with people at our houses because that's the safest way right now for us to share the peace. So I invite you to go up to someone and say, the peace of Christ be with you. And then if that's the person that you go up to, then that person should say, and also with you. And you can go back and forth. The peace of Christ be with you and also with you. I hope you have a great week. Oh, I forgot prayer concerns. After you do the peace of Christ, I would like you to share something you're excited about or you're looking forward to, something maybe you're worried about, but most importantly, something you're thankful for. So looking forward to that you are excited about, that you're worried about or you're thankful for, and then say a prayer together. You could even be in charge of the prayer. They could repeat what you say. Anyone can pray. I love you all. We'll see you soon.